And I tell people all the time, people don't understand that baseball is, is a big family. And sometimes you have arguments in your family. That just happens. But uh, I think the greatest part of the game is that every day I was out there, I was witnessing a piece of history. Sometimes history was a little bit bigger than others. But uh, every day you're out there, you're part of the history and the fabric of this whole game. And it's, it was a wonderful experience. I can't think of anything that I could have done and, and opened as many doors as I did as umpire. Man. I was lucky. I, mm-hmm. You know, so I, I was very lucky. You know, the history that you've been around, is it's outrageous. I mean, Joe was there when Willie McCovey hit his 500th home run. Joe, Joe was there when Nolan Ryan threw his fifth no-hitter. A-Rod slapping the ball out of Bronson Arroyo's hands, Joe West. <laughs> you were the guy. We're talking to Bronson tomorrow on this show. Uh, you know, so like that that's crazy that all those moments. But I got to ask, really, you didn't enjoy the contentiousness of the relationships every once in a while, like our friend Mark was asking about. It seemed like it seemed like maybe you leaned into it a little bit. I'm thinking about Mark Burley and some balk calls in Cleveland. Uh, and Ozzy Guillen losing his mind and that whole White Sox thing. It seemed like you kind of enjoyed every once in a while when they would turn on you just a little bit. You, you know, uh, Mark balked the first one early in the game. And uh, everybody loved to work Mark Burley's game because he pitches fast. Yeah. We, we loved working his games. And then late in the game, as the game progressed, he needed to pick somebody off and he balked again. And balks are kind of funny. They just kind of jump out at you. They're not... They're not something you look for when they happen. You see them and then you react. But uh, when he threw the glove up in the air, I could hear the plate umpire said, "No, Joe, don't throw him out." <laughs> really? <laughs> oh, yeah. He, he didn't want and, you to escalate it. Right. No, and and but you can't let him throw the glove up in the air sixty, seventy feet. So I had to throw him out. And and, and Ozzy was. I think Ozzy was already gone. <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, Ozzy, Ozzy, I think Ozzy looked forward to the confrontation more than anybody I was around. I don't, you know, maybe not. Maybe Earl Weaver. Okay. You know, Ozzy, I only kicked Ozzy out a few times, but Earl Weaver never finished the game I was in. <laughs> <laughs> Ozzy and Earl Weaver getting compared by Joe West here on the score. I love it. That day, Hawk Harrelson went off on you, and we have played that tape so many different times and just kind of laughed along with Hawk. Hawk. Joe West just wanted to stick it right up his behind, and he did. Yes, Joe West just wanted to stick it right up his behind. But now, you and Hawk are cool. See, this is this is an example of how people eventually get to know you, Joe, or mellowing with age. What To what do we attribute you and Hawk being pals now? Well, Hawk, Hawk likes my handicap. It's up enough where if we get on the same team, we win. <laughs> so when we play golf together, we usually win. <laughs> but but Hawk, Hawk's favorite player was Mark Burley for the same reason. He he pitched fast. He was a good guy. And, and Mark is a good guy. You know, he just – he just balked a couple of times, you know. And when he told the office, I never had a balk called on me. They called me back and said he, he wasn't telling the truth. He's had 15 called on him. <laughs> 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 but anyway, that's, that's beside the point. You know what was really cool is uh, Jerry Reinsdorf got involved in that. Yeah. And he asked uh, Joe Torrey why I was picking on his White Sox. And Joe said, if you got a problem with him, you talk to him. And Joe didn't want to talk to me. <laughs> Well, you and Joe, you you and Joe got a history like way, way back. I know you and Joe, there was a shoving incident years and years ago. But go ahead. So Joe Torrey got involved with you and Jerry. And he told uh, Mr. Reinsdorf, he said, well, you got a problem with you. Talk to him. (laughs) So we had to sit down in Arizona during the winter meetings. And uh, I explained to him, look, I I don't pick on anybody, but I have to run the ball game. I got too much to, to do to pick on somebody. Have too much to to try to get right for me to be looking to pick on somebody, and he he agreed with me, and you know what he actually agreed with me on the box too. <laughs> so, but uh, then he asked me about well, what about Ozzy? And I said I didn't tell you to hire him. He's your problem, <laughs> <It's> not mine. <laughs> That's on you, pal. All right, so so you said that when when you kick a player out or you get into one of these like vicious face-to-face classic umpire manager fights that the worst part is the paperwork after but does it also ruin your day does it ruin your night do you think about it all night or were you able to compartmentalize and put it away 
Well, it should be over after the game because if you have a, a situation, you'll sh- usually write the whole report right, right there at the at the locker room before you leave. So, yeah, you leave it at the park. It's kind of like pushing the boat away from the dock. You've left all your problems on shore. So, uh, yeah, you you don't carry it over anything like that. You know, it, it's really funny. I, I think the guy who got kicked out more than anybody was Bobby Cox mm. with the Braves in Toronto and so on. And But the next day for Bobby, it was – New day, like nothing happened. Well, that's the, that's the game, though, isn't it? Because that's that Joe. That's kind of the, that's the lesson of the game. I think that's why some of us love it as much as we do. Is like you can fail, oh, yeah. things can go bad, things can be ugly. You've Got to wake up and show up the next day. That's exactly right, and you got to go out there and do it again. And the, and the coolest part of this is, and I, I tell people all the time, there is no rehearsal. There's no place for an umpire to go to rehearse. <laughs> there's no batting practice. There's no. There's nothing. Or you can go rehearse. I'm going to do this. I'm going to. You have to do it all spontaneous and on the spot. So uh, that sometimes can be difficult because mm-hmm. uh, I don't remember ever playing with a band where I didn't have some sort of rehearsal. <laughs> so <laughs> even the, even the Hee Haw band at the Grand Ole Opry, we we sang through everything we were going to do twice before we did it. So, uh, but anyway, uh, it's it's a unique job. It's a unique position. And you're going to be hated and despised by people just because they're pulling for somebody else. Mm-hmm. There's nobody that goes to the game and pulls for you. Not one person, yeah. Joe. Not not one person is going there and pulling for you, including well, it, you even, know? even the umpire, even the umpire's wife, because she didn't want anybody to know that she's with you. <laughs> <laughs> did she did she hide her head every once in a while, yeah. Joe. Oh yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> She says, I can only hear you called being called dirty names so many times. And I got to go. You know. uh, it, th- that makes sense. I understand. So instead of lashing out at those fans, she would just disassociate with you. <laughs> but see, then, too, you know, I broke the record for most games umpired in uh, White Sox at White Sox ballpark. Yes. You know? Congrats. And, and the entire White Sox staff was gracious. They helped me with tickets. Of course, I had to pay for them. You know Jerry's an owner, but he ain't going to give me no tickets. Jesus! So I had to pay for I had to pay for 127 tickets. I, I you know, I, I, I'm I'm not for the robotic strike zone. Frankly, I do. I, I feel like the best home plate umps should get that assignment more, though, Joe. Like that, not every ump should get a turn behind the plate just as part of the rotation. <laughs> you were president of the umpires association for a lot of years. Did that idea ever come up to to have it not just be rotation, but have it be based on merit, if you will? Well, they what they tried to do, and they tried to do it in the playoffs in the World Series, is to get it where uh, no umpire would work to play twice in a World Series or in a playoff championship series or whatever. But uh, no, you, you, the last umpire that they had that worked multiple times behind the plate was a guy named Bill Clem, and Bill Clem worked when they only had two umpires, and. Uh, you see, a lot of people don't realize that in the history of baseball, there's, there's only been about 400 umpires in the entire history of baseball. And the reason was, when they first started, there were only two umpires that worked the game. And if you'll remember, Bill Clem, when he worked, uh, he had more ejections than anybody because he worked home plate more than anybody. Uh-huh. The league president called him and said, uh, well, I'm going to take your partner away from me. He said, you're not taking him away from me. He's my partner. He said, well, he can't work home plate. So Bill Clem said, well, then I'll work home plate for him. So Bill Clem worked home plate for him every day of the year. Hmm. He worked every game behind the plate. A lot of people don't know that there were people like that back then. And then you have to understand that even when Jackie Robinson came up, you've seen the movie 42? Yep. All right. What was wrong with that movie? Oh. There was something technically wrong with hmm. the movie. They have umpires at every base? Yes. Uh-huh. But when Jackie Robinson came to the big leagues, there were only three umpires. And when he played those games in the minor leagues, there were only two. Mm. So they didn't do that research to get that correct in the film. You see what I'm saying? I do. So that's why there have only been 400 or less umpires in the big leagues in the history of the game. And do you know that I worked with more than 150 of them? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds right. I mean, yeah. Uh, uh, any? Do you have any advice for Angel Hernandez for his next game behind the plate, Joe? He had a rough well, one on Sunday night. They need they need to think the strike zone that they're grading him on in 
public media to the strike zone that's grading him in baseball because I called him and talked to him and asked him about what his score was, and the office said he scored 96. The media is saying that he scored 85. So they're off. And you can't have two different strike zones. Mm. See what I'm saying? Absolutely. That that's a big problem because it seems like every network and some of the obviously the locals now everybody's got their own uh, automated strike zone that we're watching and measuring against, right? You know. You know what? If they're all the same, I have no problem. But if they're not all the same, and the discrepancy is between 85 percent and 96 percent, then something's wrong. Yeah. So I have a real problem with that. And and there's nobody. Nobody in the world works harder at his profession than Angel Hernandez. He works he works his tail off to try to get every pitch and every play right. So uh, he's, he's getting a raw deal here. It's not right for him to be picking on him, even if it's over one pitch. Let's say he did miss one pitch, you know, mm-hmm. one pitch out of 300. Or let's say he, he scored 96 out of the 200 pitches that he had to call. You see what I'm saying? I do. That's, yeah, see that's that, a good game. That's fascinating. That that 96 that should be public. The grading system should be integrated with the broadcast. Like all that's it's got to get together so we don't have these kind of I, discrepancies, Joe. I have no problem as long as you make it the same for everybody. You you are but, being super generous with your time. We just got to sneak a couple more quickies in. Did you teach <laughs> Did you teach Leslie Nielsen some moves when you were the third base umpire in the oh, Naked Gun? My my <laughs> word! When I got to that set, I pulled up in the left field because they were having all the actors park in left field, and he's rehearsing the national anthem. And all I can think of is, what did I get myself? <laughs> <laughs> It was unbelievable, and he was hilarious and fun to work with, and that was Priscilla Presley's first movie. She had done television, but she hadn't done she hadn't done a movie before, and she was, of course, she was the, the female star of the, of the movie, and uh, they were all great to work with. George Kennedy was such a, such a pleasure to work with. They were all fun, and uh, the first base umpire was Hank Robinson, who was a career minor leaguer, but his... Playing the same with Lauren Green's double. If you ever saw Lauren Green on a horse, it was Hank. It wasn't <laughs> Lauren Green because Lauren Green was scared to death of horses. So this one morning, he tells us a story about his first acting job. He said, really? He said, what happened? He said, well, it was, I was an extra in this Gene Autry picture, and I'm a blacksmith. And so they came to me and said, Hank, we're going to give you a job. We're going to give you a speaking part. Well, when you get a speaking part, then you get paid residuals. Then you get a, a full lunch at lunch break. You know, you can get a salad and whatever you want for lunch. When you're an extra, you just get a Coke and some potato chips. You know what I'm saying? So they tell him, Hank, we're going to give you this job. And your your speaking part is Gene's going to ride up on Champion. He's going to say, do you see some riders come through here? And your response is, yes, I did. So Hank said, I sat there all morning going, yes, I did. 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 Yeah. So they break. They go to lunch. He's so nervous he can't he can't eat. He's still rehearsing. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. <laughs> so they do the they do the thing. As soon as they come back from lunch, Archie rides up on Champion. He says, "Did you see some riders come through?" And Hank said, "Did I?" The director goes cut. Goes cut. Right. So Hank's argument with Leslie Nielsen in the movie was, "He's out. He's safe. He's out. He's safe." He's out the first time he ran out of the baseline. All right, you're out of here. And then I say, you can't throw an umpire of the game. And he says, all right, you're out of here. So the director sees us do that. And he says, Hank, he says, when he throws you out of the game, you bow your chest out and say, what do you mean? And so he says, okay. And I said, and then I come in on that. And they said, yeah, that's when you come in. I said, you want to rehearse it? Hank says, no, I got it. I got it. And I'm thinking to myself, there's no way he's going to get this right. No way. Sure enough, they do the thing, argument at first base. He's out, he's safe, he's out, he's safe. He's out, why are you idiot? He's out the first time he ran out of the baseline. Unless the deal goes, all right, you're out of here. And Hank bows his chest out, and he looks over his shoulder at me. He says, what's my line? <laughs> and when he said that, I said, did I? Because that was his line that he messed up with the Gene Autry picture. And when I said, did I, Leslie Nielsen said, would I? 
And Hank said, no, it's did I. And now they start going back and forth, did I, would I, did I. And the director's going, he's pulled his hair out. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> 